Noah, I'm sure that uh, that he was he was a good dad. He was he was faithful, and he did that which the Lord commanded. So, I think right there is defining the definition of a of a good father, and and uh, tonight. Fortunately, it's Father's Day, so I already knew I had, we had finished Nehemiah, and, and I knew we were coming into Father's Day, and so I just want to kind of go uh, over the topic of fathers, and this has been, I'm not keeping count, but I'm just trying to think out loud, this has been uh, uh, the third time that, that I've had to talk about fathers, on Father's Day here, at, here at the church, and as far as I as far as I can remember, so. And the thing with that is, I can't find any of my notes or anything that I covered. And I know we have more than likely we have audio, but that didn't help me. But I, that's one thing I always appreciate about Pastor. I mean, he may have the same, you know, the same. Uh, message to deliver, but it's always different. He pastor never preached the same sermon twice, and and that was an example to me. And I know that is that's very hard to follow because if that's what God wants, uh, I believe that Pastor Noise did what God wanted to do. So so tonight we're going to talk about fathers, and it may seem a little random, but it's not. I, I mean, you know, you're just going to have to trust me until we, until we get going through here. And, and just a, a caveat, I wasn't going to do a, uh, a, a slideshow or anything like this because we're kind of just going to bounce all over, but, but we have it, so I'm going to do it. So we're, we're going to start out tonight in the book of Genesis and very first book in the Bible. Genesis, or the, the beginning, and we're going to get in the beginning book of the Bible. We're, gonna, we're just going to go to Genesis chapter 46, And in Genesis chapter 46, we're going to read verse, well, we'll read verse 28 and uh, 29. So Genesis chapter 46, starting with verse 28. And he sent Judah before him unto Joseph to direct his face unto Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen. And Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father, to Goshen, and presented himself unto him, and he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. Let's pray. Lord God, we just thank you for, for all, that you've, all that you are and all that you've done and all that, Lord, that you will do. And, and Lord, for the promise that we have in your book, in, your, in the Holy Bible, your, your holy promise, uh, your... You said, let all men be true, or let, let all men be liars, and, you, and you're the only one that's true, and, and Lord, your word is truth. Thy word is truth, and, and just help us as we go through tonight just to, just to glean a little bit more about you, and we ask for this in Jesus' name, amen. So Genesis 46, starting at 28, and he sent Judah before him unto Joseph to direct his face unto Goshen, and they came into the land of Goshen. And Joseph made ready his chariot, and went up to meet Israel, his father, to Goshen, and presented himself unto him, and he fell on his neck, and wept on his neck a good while. And we know that, that Joseph was around 17 years old when he was sent out on that fateful day uh, for a task by his dad. Uh, to go see what uh, his brothers are up to, how the, the flock was doing. 
And so, so we know at 17 years is when Joseph managed to, well, find his brothers, and his brothers managed to think, uh, well, you know, we've finally had enough of, of Joseph, and, you know, we, we, well, hey, there's somebody passing along here. Those are Ishmaelites. We should sell him to them. And, and eventually they did, uh, much to the chagrin of Reuben, they, they did actually sell him to Midianite merchantmen. merchantmen. So, so Joseph, Joseph was a free person. He was, a, almost, I would say, a free man. He was a growing young man. He was a free man, and then, just like that, in one day, he was sold as a slave. He went from being a free man on, on, a, on a, a task for his father to being a slave. So if we think about that, as we go through this uh, uh, Genesis here, we can, we can think about the next time Joseph's age was given was, was when Joseph was before Pharaoh. And it says that 30, 30 years of age was when Joseph uh, was in front of Pharaoh interpreting uh, Pharaoh's dreams. So you have to think about 13 years had passed. 13 years had passed since that day where his brothers had sold him to the Midianite merchantmen. Now, he was able to get into a, a, a pretty good job, and he was able to succeed. Uh, even though he was, uh, you know, the head of Potiphar's house, but that kind of went under the, under the bridge, so to speak, too. That, that fell through, not because of anything that, that he was doing, but because of Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife had something that, that she wanted, and Joseph's, Joseph was, was uh, still obeying God, just like he was obeying his father. His father sent him out on a task, and, and God said, no, you don't have anything to do with with Potiphar's wife, and, and then, he, then he was in prison. And he was in prison for two years. And so you have to think about all this time, all this time had passed since that day that he was sold into the Midianite, Midianite uh, merchantmen as, as a slave. So 13 years is a long time, at least to, to me. <laughs> when I think about last month, Boy, that was a long time ago, let alone something that took place 13 years, 13 years ago. And so I think Joseph had kind of put those things in the past. You know, he had put everything that, that his brothers did to him, how they treated him, I think he put that in the past. He, he kind of filed that away. Uh, and just like I think he kind of filed away all that time that he was he was head of the house of, of Potiphar, he had just kind of filed that away as he went through and served in uh, in uh, the prison that he was in. So, and at the same time, at the same time, we have we have Jacob or Israel pretty much giving up that pretty much like my son Joseph is is dead. So we kind of we kind of see that 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 Israel or Jacob didn't quite didn't quite let go of the memory much uh, much like Joseph I think kind of like let go of that memory and there's one thing that we have in common with with Joseph and that is we all had a mother and a father I know that's not like a poof wow but really, in our, in our day, in, in our current society, that thought is kind of going away. You know, when we, we, every human has a mother and has a father, so we have something in common with Joseph. And, and since it is Father's Day, I wanted to do, you know, just what does a father 
just what does a father do or not do? And, and I'm using the data provided by the government, so I'm using the, the data from the U.S. Census Bureau of, of 2017, and this data uh, represents children, uh, boys or girls, uh, that are living without a biological father, a stepfather, or an adoptive father. And these, these numbers are, are just a little bit like, wow, that's how important a father is. And I'm not just diminishing the role of, of a mother at all, but the role of the father is something that has been specifically, I, I feel specifically diminished as we have progressed in our society here in the United States. And according to the 2017 uh, U.S. Census Bureau, there was 19.7 million children, basically more than one in four children, in the United States live without a father in the home. And consequently, there is a father factor in nearly all social ills facing America today. This is, this is what the, the report is providing, basically. They're saying, yes, we acknowledge there's a problem. One in four children live without a biological father, a stepfather, or adoptive father in their house. And this is what happens. Drug and alcohol abuse follows children are more prone to substance abuse. They are four times uh, greater risk uh, to, to go into poverty and to stay in poverty. They are seven times more likely to be with child as a teenager, seven times more likely. They're two times more likely to drop out of high school, drop out of high school, two times more likely. And they're also two times more likely to suffer from obesity. This is, this is all the, and there's a lot more statistics. I'm, I'm just, there's a lot of percentages to go behind there, but I'm just kind of picking the ones out that had the, that had the, you know, this is the number of times greater. And then they're also uh, more likely to go to prison with, and more likely to have behavior problems. And listen to this one, listen to this one. 85% more likely to have behavior problems or 20 times the average of what children that have behavior problems are without a father, biological step, or even adoptive in the home. 20 times more likely to have behavior problems. And they have a higher, uh, a higher uh, percent of crime are committed by by kids that have grown up fatherless. And, and the last one is, is especially sad, and without a father, they are even more susceptible to child abuse. Without a father present in the home, they're more susceptible to child abuse, and that is including something that you maybe don't necessarily consider abuse, which is neglect. So without a father, they're even more likely to face child abuse and and neglect. So, so some pretty, pretty whoa uh, statistics, and and it's why fathers really need. It's why men really need to go from from being a dad to being a father, not just being a man, but being a being a, a godly man and a godly father. So that way we can break some of these uh, percentages, and that's and that's something that just you, you know I know I'm depressing you. Those are very depressing statistics, but you know it, when we think about Joseph here, Joseph, well he grew up with a father and mother and and plenty of brothers and and sisters around. And, but but here we have, we have we can read in Genesis the problems that that Joseph, uh, his family had after, while he lived with them and also while, when they sold him into into slavery they the family had lots of problems and you know, 
I think that is because Jacob did not follow God's plan for, for marriage and for a family. And that's something that, that is the biblical definition of a family. Uh, and it's kind of been recoined in, in the late, for, rephrased in, in the late 1940s, a nuclear family during that whole period of time. But a nuclear family is just basically a biblical family, and the, the world has taken the, the, the Bible away from the family. But it's a biblical family, which is a, gr a family group that consists only of a father, mother, and children. There's no, there's no extras there. That is God's definition of a family, and that also happens to be the world's definition of a family, too. Imagine that. God being right, and the world is trying to agree with God, but the world's uh, we can't use that's a biblical family. And you know what? I, uh, I know. Not everybody has the privilege. Like Brother Nathan uh, preached today, he had, he had a privilege of growing up in the family he has, and not everybody has that. And I, I understand that. Other people understand that. But you're depressing me still. I'm, this is Father's Day. You're supposed to, I'm at church, we're supposed to be, you know, we're supposed to be kind of, kind of excited, kind of happy. We're supposed to do something that, that, that pleases. No, I'm not tickling my ears, but, but, you know, this, this is sad stuff. And this is why fathers are, are so important. Or even, even, um, even having a, a male, uh, figure in the in the lives of children also makes a huge difference, and you know, and maybe you're maybe you're not following along because this doesn't you just don't connect with this because you don't have a father, or you haven't seen your father so long, or your father's somebody you don't really want to know, or maybe you're maybe you are a uh, female and you have no idea what it's like to be a father, which is which is uh, good and 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 bad at the same time. Much like I don't have any idea what it's like to be a mother, except the other interesting thing, when you go back and look, you go back into the United States history, and the father was actually more of a central uh, role in the family. And yeah, that included, you know, the, uh, it included the time from the time the, the child was born, and it included all the way through growing up. The, the father was much more involved. And and, and yeah, I, I mean, I can thank the Lord that, yes, I had diaper duty. Uh, but it's not something I enjoyed, but it's something that I was able to do uh, because it supported, it supported our family, it supported my wife. But it's interesting, though, that the father has, has just kind of, kind of went downhill and, and is really being marginalized. And... And I want to tell you tonight, I want to tell you tonight that, that just as you see, you see a, a picture of, of Jacob and his children presenting, you know, what's left of, of Joseph's garment that they, they doctored up. That family had some problems, but you know what? I'd like to tell you, not about my father, but I want to tell you about my heavenly father. I want to tell you, I want to, I want to brag on my heavenly father. I want, to, I want to praise the Lord God, my heavenly father. And I want to tell you something, something about my heavenly father. And we're just going to go through some verses where I'm just bragging on my heavenly father, my father God, which, which is in heaven. And we're just going to go through these and and you can follow along and I'm just going to read or you can also read and follow along while I read how do you like that are you paying attention yeah that's like turn to Ephesians 24 did, 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 did I get anybody I I still remember that that was that was pretty good but actually we're going to turn to Luke 12 and, and we're just going to read one verse in here. And this verse, this verse has so much in it, but I'm not going to park on it because I want to tell you about my, 
my heavenly Father. I want to praise my heavenly Father. I want to brag on my heavenly Father. In Luke chapter 12, one verse, one verse out of here. It's verse 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I read that, and I think, oh, that is so good. That is so good. It is, it is my, it is, this is Jesus saying it is, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Our Heavenly Father is wanting to give us the kingdom. And you know what? It's not, it's not Him that has separated Himself from us. We've separated ourselves from Him through, through, from our sin. And, and by our sin are we separated. But He's there and He's waiting. He's waiting for the, the prodigal son. He's waiting there for, for the, the sinner just to say, I surrender these sins. I want to be saved. He's waiting. He's ready to give you the kingdom. My heavenly father is an awesome, an awesome heavenly father. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He's, he's, an, he's just, oh, there's just so much there, but we're going to keep going. We're going to go to John 14. And I kind of put up here what we're going to what we're going to read about, I have no idea. I have no idea. I have an idea, but I know, I know this is not what is going to, uh, what this is going to look like. John 14, we're going to re start at the very first verse. Let not your hearts, heart, let not your hearts, I just keep going. I, I, I'm a little excited because I want to praise and brag on my heavenly father. John 14, starting at verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. My Father, my Heavenly Father, is preparing mansions He's preparing mansions for us in, in, his, in his heaven, you know. What a, what a great heavenly father. And, and it's just uh, the Hayes Mansion in, in California, just very picturesque. But that's probably nothing like what our, our mansion is going to be like in heaven because it will be created by our father, by our father God. And... <laughs> And it's just wow, this is what is awaiting. And if you get a different, if you get a different quote translation, you're not going to have a mansion. You might have a room, you might have a closet, you might have an apartment. But you know what? I believe in God's word, and and it's been preserved for us in the King James version, and it says mansion. I believe that. My Father in heaven can do that. He he don't do apartments. He's, he's not into that. Let's read in Matthew chapter 12 just, just about our, our heavenly Father, about, the, about God the Father, about just something else that is, that's just Jesus gave us about our heavenly Father about his heavenly father and if you're you're saved and if you are in Christ he's our heavenly father too Matthew chapter 12 we're going to read verse 46 down through the end of the chapter while he yet talked to the to the people behold his, this is referencing Jesus here while he yet Talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do 
the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. You know, you can kind of read that and you're like, what? That, no, no, that's, that's not it. But Jesus is not talking about physical things right here. Not talking about your physical family. He's talking about his spiritual family. And you know what? Jesus said right here, I can be a joint heir with, through him. I could be a joint heir in Christ. And I could have the heavenly father as my father. And I could have brothers. And I could have sisters. How good is the Lord God? How great is our heavenly father? And I just kind of put this up here because I... You know, I have not seen nor ear has heard what, what wonderful, marvelous things that, that God is preparing. And, you know, I don't know what heaven looks like, but it's going to be great. I, I have no doubt because God has said it's going to be great. And, and right here, I can be a joint heir. I can be, I can be a child of the king. God is, God is awesome. And Luke, Luke 10, we're going to actually pick a couple uh, portions of scripture out of Luke, and they're actually right next to each other. I'm just bragging on the God the Father tonight. You know, we serve only one God, but he's been revealed to us in, in three separate uh, persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I'm, when I'm bragging on God the Father, I'm just bragging on God. I'm bragging on the Lord, the only true God. In Luke chapter 10, Starting at verse 22. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. Whew. Let's keep reading, though. And he turned unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes of which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Wow, what has God given us? We, we, have, we have the word of God. We have, what, we have what has taken place in history. We have what, what God has wanted us to, to know. I mean... What, what an awesome God. What, you know, let's praise God our Father because right here he's telling his, his disciples, you know, there's been kings and prophets that have been, you know, what wants to see this and haven't been able to. And how blessed are you? How blessed are we? We just want to praise God that, that here in, I forgot today's date, <laughs> July 16th, no, June 16th, 2019, we could, we could be blessed because we have the word of God preserved for us, that we can know, we can know what an awesome God, God the Father is. And in Luke chapter 11, just one page over for me, maybe the same page for you. I've got the large print edition, so it's a page over. Luke chapter 11 at verse 11, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? That was a question mark at the end. It wasn't a statement. You can read that, and it's an implied statement, but Jesus is saying, you know, how much the more, question mark. I mean, how much the more um, is the Father going to give you something very precious? He's going to, he, God is going to be given to us through the Holy Spirit. And we know, because we read the Bible, the Holy Spirit is given to us as the earnest of our Inheritance. He's given to us as the down payment. He's given there. Uh, he's given the Holy Spirit to us to seal us unto the the day <clears throat> unto the day where. Uh, oh, I get. I actually am talking fast. 
you know, the Holy Spirit has got us sealed into the, our day of redemption. And, and Jesus is saying, you know, I'm going to give you even more. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you more of me. I'm going to give you more of God, your Father. Just, wow. I mean, what an awesome, what an awesome Father in heaven that we can brag on. And we can brag on. But you know, I read a story here. It wasn't a story. It was, it was actually a news article. And I want to I read this, and I kind of want to hone this in a little bit because, you know, God is great. And, and you know, I just am bragging on I want to praise him tonight. But, but I want to come back to the subject of, of a father. And in recently, uh, I'm just going to read, the, actually, the, the news story. The father of a 17-year-old girl... Uh, who was attacked by a shark earlier this month, opened up about the horrifying incident and detailed how he freed uh, the teen from the fish, fish's jaws. And uh, Charlie Winter uh, is the name of the father, and his daughter's name is Paige Winter. And he was swimming with his daughter at uh, Atlantic Beach in North Carolina on June 2nd, so just a couple weeks ago. At, and... And the story, and I'll quote the story. At one point, after other teenagers swimming near them began shouting shark and get her, he noticed uh, that there was a, a, a trail in the water. And, and Charlie said he immediately dove down, grabbing Paige while simultaneously pulling what is now thought to be a bull shark out of the water. It was a big shark. I immediately started to hit it, he said. I don't know how many times I punched it, but I hit it with everything I could, and it let go. Winter said the creature chased him at arm's length until he reached the shore with his daughter. And Winter, Charlie Winter, a former paramedic, said he applied pressure to the teen's bodily, uh, badly injured uh, left leg, um, and also, uh, uh, which was uh, later amputated, and two of Paige's uh, fingers on her left hand also uh, were removed following the attack. So vicious, vicious uh, bad attack. But, but <clears throat> let, me keep, let me keep reading this. In the struggle, Winders added that his daughter had been attempting to pry open the shark's mouth with their hands. And listen to this part. Listen to this part. This, this speaks uh, so much here. Afterward, he said she was calm and just kept repeating the word, repeating the word dad, repeating the word dad as he carried her to safety. Repeating the word dad. How much of an influence does a, a father have in the lives of children? A huge influence. And in this case, Paige's dad probably saved her life, and she just kept repeating the word dad. And you know, that's just, it's a true story. You can look it up, and you can read about it, but I'm also telling you something here that's very serious. I'm, I've got my serious tone. I, I know you can't tell I switch tones, but I have. I've got my serious tone, and because we're going to go into John chapter 14, We're going to read John 14, verse 8 and 9. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it suffices us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? The Father is God the Father. And if we know, if we know God the Son, we know God the Father. And, 
And I just want to say, take time tonight and just say, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you don't know God the Son, all of these great things that I have just read from God's Word about the Lord God doesn't apply to you because God is not your Heavenly Father yet. Because Jesus said, if you don't know me, you don't know the Father. So tonight, tonight, you can make the decision to make Jesus, the Son of God, your Savior and your Redeemer, and you can enter into a relationship with Him, and you could also enter a relationship and you can have a Heavenly Father, one that is so awesome, I just, I don't even, I can't even sum it up. I, I, all I can do is, is, is read what God has given us about Himself. But you know, at the very end, when we go back to Joseph, we think, wow, that was kind of messed up, and, and he had to go through all this stuff. And you know what? There's actually something. There's not another slide. Okay. But let's look at how the Lord took care of Joseph. Even in spite of all, all what had happened to him, being sold and, and, and being in prison, all his, all his ups and downs. Let's go back into the Genesis. Let's go back in Genesis and let's, and let's see how Heavenly Father took care of Joseph. And I just want to read in Genesis 41. We're going to read Genesis 41, 51, and 52. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God said he, hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. In the name of the second he called he Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Joseph hadn't seen his father at this point for, uh, 13, that's nine, for about 28 years, I think. I, my math is bad, so I may be off. 13 years plus 7 plus 2, 22 years or so. Okay, there we go. I think I got it down. But Joseph was still able to go, I forgot about these things, but I remember the Lord God. I have followed him, and I'm going to name my son Manasseh. And you know why I'm going to name my son Manasseh? For God hath caused me to be fruitful. Um, I got that the one mixed around. For God hath made me forget all my toils and all my father's house. This is, this is Joseph going, God's taking care of me. God the Father is taking care of me. He's, and he's made me forget everything that's happened. He's made me forget everything that was bad. And you know what? I'm going to name my son. And Joseph named his second son Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And if, you're, if you find yourself where, you, where you're struggling with, with your uh, not having a father, not having the right uh, kind of godly father, we can take the example here that God says, Joseph, he forgot that stuff, and he said, Lord God, thank you for causing me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction and thank you for for being able to forget all my all the toil in my father's house this is how this is how good the lord god was this is how good god the father is to people he's able to to take all the bad and he's able to put all the good in if he's able to he's able to take sin and he's able to forgive sin and once he forgives sin it's gone once he takes some bad stuff away, he's going to give you some good stuff to put in place. And as we see here, Joseph praised God because Joseph said, I've got kids and now I can, I can be the example that maybe wasn't quite 100% for me growing up. 
and I thank God for it. And so tonight, just happy Father's Day to the fathers here, and I just want to encourage you, as I've been bragging on God the Father, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you don't know that you've been forgiven of your sins tonight, you can confess to Jesus your sins and you can enter into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Your sin, and he will be your Savior. He will come into, in with you and He will sup with you, meaning He will be with you. He will be there and He'll see in your land of affliction. He'll see that you've been through all of this and He'll take that from you. And it might not be like that, as far as all the bad stuff, but like that, your sin is gone. And you've been, you've been washed and you've been justified before God the Father. And through that, you have a relationship with God the Father also. So I just encourage, if there's anyone that has any doubt, you can settle that tonight by saying, God, I, I want to be forgiven of, your, of my sins and Jesus Please forgive me of my sins, and, and Lord God, become my heavenly Father. That way, all these promises and more are mine, too. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for, for the Bible, and I thank you for, for all those that were afflicted that, that you used to preserve your word so that we can, we can read it freely, and Lord, we, too, can know how to be saved. Lord, we too can know your promise that, that you go to prepare a place for us. And you said, if I go, I will doubtless come again. And we thank you for, for being the one true living God. And, and Jesus, we thank you for offering that eternal life through your work, your finished work on Calvary. It's the only way we can be forgiven our sins. And we thank you, Jesus, for that. And we, we just praise you for the time that we've had tonight, and we just praise you, Lord God, for thou heart worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.